So welcome to Vortex Garage and the start of our new project, this 2003 Mercury Mountaineer. So this vehicle's come in with some pretty serious driveline binding issues. So what we're going to do to start things off, we're going to talk a little bit about how the all-wheel drive system works in this particular vehicle. We're going to also talk about the importance of the tire size from front to back. And then we're going to start doing some diagnostics and then hopefully some repairs. After that, we're going to go ahead and do a full inspection of the vehicle, including the suspension for placing any worn components as necessary, the engine and transmission, and the rest of the driveline, doing some tune-up and fluid changes as we go along. To wrap things up, we're going to help do a clean-up interior, make sure everything's in good shape, and I think we're going to have a pretty nice truck when it's all said and done. So I'm glad you're here to join us for this project. I think it's going to be very interesting. And uh, with that said, let's get to work. All right, so as you can see, we tore up the gravel pretty good with the binding that's going on. There's definitely also a lot of suspension clunks, so we're gonna have to definitely check that out and see what the problem is. All right, so one of the very first things we're gonna do in terms of our diagnostics and repair on this vehicle is take a look at one of the most obvious faults that we noticed when it came in, and that is with the tires. The tires on this truck are completely shot. Let's take a look at this rear tire, for example. We'll go ahead and zoom in and show you. And you can see the outer edge of the tire is pretty much completely bald. And then in the center, we see some areas of raised tread and some cut down tread. And that kind of alternates in a pattern along the circumference of this tire. Now that's definitely indicative that we've got an alignment problem with our independent rear suspension, probably some worn suspension components, and definitely that binding that's being experienced is causing and contributing to the shape of the tires. If we look up front, things are a little bit better, but still pretty bad. This thing really isn't even roadworthy in the shape that it's in. And uh, another item, take a look in the back, we've got a set of Kelly Safaris. Up front, some DF Goodrich Rugged Trails. That may not sound like a problem, but in this particular all-wheel drive setup, that's going to be an issue for us. So before we can even take this thing on test drives, we need to get a new set of tires on it. That's one of the first things we did, is go ahead and order out a set of four brand new tires. So we'll be taking these down in the trailer along with the tires and wheels off this, leaving it on jack stands because we can't drive it on the road, and then we'll go ahead and get these mounted and balanced, and as we do our repairs, we'll know we have a safe working platform of brand new tires that we can go ahead and do test drives. All right, so we're here in the back of our Mercury Mountaineer and we're talking a little bit about the tire sizes. Before we can really dig into that, we need to understand how the all-wheel drive system works in this vehicle. Now later on, we'll probably have some videos that discuss the difference between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, talk a little bit about the various types of systems out there, and maybe the pros and cons of each. In this particular case, we're not really concerned with the merits or detractions from this system, but the facts of how it operates and how that can contribute to our binding issue. So this particular Mountaineer uses a Borg Warner full-time all-wheel drive transfer case. It doesn't have a low range, and it doesn't have any buttons or levers on the dash for system activation. In this case, the full-time all-wheel drive is provided by a viscous coupling in the transfer case. That viscous coupling is a non-serviceable part, it's a sealed unit with two plates inside that rotate in a highly viscous fluid. And that's what gives us our all-wheel drive and our torque split. 
In normal operation, it sends about 65% of the torque to the rear and 35% front. If slip is detected, it'll go ahead and transfer to about 50-50 torque split, and I think it can send up to 65% to the front and 35% in the rear. Now it determines that through mechanical means, looking at the speed differentiation between the front and the rear. Let's give an example on that. In normal operation going along, again, 65% of the torque in the rear, 35% up front. Now let's say we're driving up a hill and it's got snow and ice on it. In that case, with all most of the torque coming to the back, we might have some slippage in the rear first. In that case, the system will react as there is a higher speed in the back as it's rotating as it slips than the front assembly. When that occurs, the viscous coupling will lock, giving us that 50-50 torque split, or in severe conditions, even 65% front, 35 in the rear. Now that's important. In a normal sense like that, that speed differentiation is going to cause our viscous coupling to lock and, and transfer the torque accordingly. Now what happens if our tire sizes aren't the same? That's where we get into trouble with these types of systems. This is a quick primer. This is our radius of the tire from the center to the edge. Our diameter is basically the width, the length of the tire in its widest spot. And then of course the circumference is the area going all around the tire. Now if the circumference of the rear and front tires are off or different, then essentially, let's say at 55 miles an hour, you're gonna have a different rotational speed on the outer edge of each tire. As a result, the inside axle will spin at a different rotational speed. Now what that means is that if our circumference is off, and I've heard as little as 3 sixteenths of an inch difference is enough to set off some viscous couplings, that viscous coupling is gonna react to one axle spinning faster than the other at all times. And that, that can cause a problem. That can cause our viscous coupling to run in that lock state all the time. Now if that happens, and if that happened here, which I suspect is the case with the different types of tires front to rear, then our viscous coupling probably burned out and it's probably stuck in a locked position, splitting that torque and causing our binding issue. So let's go ahead and break out a measuring tape. We're gonna take some measurements on these tires and see what our, what our circumference difference is from front to rear. All right, so again, here at the rear tire, we're gonna check for the circumference. And that's important because we're gonna check the circumference of the rear tire and then the circumference of the front tire. And if we find that there's a difference, then we know that the, uh, basically the front and rear axle are not turning at the same speed, which is causing our viscous coupling to lock. If we see anything larger than a 3 16 variation, then we can assume that that viscous coupling's probably been running partially or fully locked for quite some time. And as a result, our binding issue is probably a result of a burned out viscous coupling that's stuck in a locked position. So we've got a measuring tape here, and what we're gonna do is wrap that around the tire, and we've jacked it up to take the weight off so we don't have a, a, you know, the tire sitting on the suspension weight. We can get a true reading of what our tire circumference is. So we'll feed that underneath. Come up around, making sure that it's nice and tight. We're gonna go right in the center of the tire and try to keep it even as we go along. And that'll help ensure a nice, accurate read. In doing so, it appears that we have about 91 and 3 quarters inch is our circumference on this tire. All right, so let's move to the front and check that. That means we should be within 3 sixteenths of that measurement to not have any issues. All right, so here at the front, we're gonna do the same. We'll wrap our measuring tape under the tire, put it nice and tight, run along the center of the tread, and pull everything tight and get our measurement. All right, and it looks like, wow, it looks like we've got 92 and 7 eighths. So that's a one, and 1 16th inch difference from front to back. Now we had just mentioned that a 3 16th difference from front to back is enough to cause a potential issue with the viscous coupling. Well, we've essentially got a 17 16th difference, so quite a bit more. We've got about an inch difference front to back. Now I'm sure that's enough to go ahead and cause this problem with the viscous coupling. My guess is that that viscous coupling has been running locked up on dry pavement for many miles and is probably burned out, stuck in a locked position. Now, there's still some more things we can do to verify that and do some diagnostics. So our next step, we're gonna pull the front drive shaft. So 
So here under our Mountaineer, we can now get a better view of our front drive shaft. So this is the front new joint, and as you can see, it's held with some T30 Torx bolts. They're actually loctited from the factory, so you're going to need to use an impact grade socket to get those off. You probably see some marks there. We've gone ahead and marked the drive shaft, that way I can put it back in in the same orientation, just in case it was balanced any, any way specifically. Moving around to the back, we've got some 8mm bolts. And uh, we'll go ahead and get everything loose, but the back side actually needs to come out before the front, mainly because of the way the, the sockets into the transfer case there. So um, we're going to remove the back part first, and then the front part. But because these are Loctited, we're actually going to go ahead and just rotate it enough to get everything broken loose, and that way we'll go ahead and be able to easily take everything out and remove the drive shaft. Now something very important to keep in mind, this particular setup, once you take the front drive shaft out, it may not hold it in park. So you're going to want to, at minimum, chalk the rear wheels, or ideally have the entire thing up on jack stands as you're under here. The last thing you want to do, and of course you've got your emergency brake set, but anyway, the last thing you want to do is trust any of those systems and be underneath it and have something happen and get hurt. Basic safety stuff, you've got to keep it in mind, you've got to double check it, especially when you're under here. Alright, so we got the front detached and pushed up. I'm going to very carefully pop the sock ball socket out of the back. Move the whole assembly forward. And you can carefully drop it out. And there we go, one Mountaineer drive shaft. So here's our Mountaineer drive shaft removed and the hardware that attaches it. And this is that ball socket we were talking about on the end that you have to be careful not to damage. With the front drive shaft removed, we can go ahead and take this off the jack stands, go back out, and do another low speed turning test to see if the binding has gone away. If indeed the binding's gone, we know this temporary fix has shown that we need a new viscous coupling, and we'll go ahead and work on ordering one. Once we're done with that, the next thing up, get these tires off, take them down in the trailer, and get some new rubber put on. After me, our binding issue is gone. That tells us we've got a bad viscous coupling. We're going to go ahead and get one ordered up and a few other parts to go along with it so we can fix the drivetrain of this vehicle. We've also got some suspension components that we need to replace, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this diagnostic video and I hope you enjoyed the start of this project. We'll be hosting a lot more videos on this as we get this Mountaineer back to being roadworthy.